Are you the deputy leader of the UKIP? Uh, I was Party? under uh, Malcolm Pearson, the former leader. <laughs> I'm now the head of policy. So head of policy of the United Kingdom Independence Party. That's right, um, which is the second largest British party in elections to the European Parliament. Yes, they, they have members, don't they? they have Absolutely, yes, yes, we have a dozen. We've just got a new one, in fact, Roger Helmer, who was a Conservative member of the European Parliament. We've been um, talking of this for some years. He's now jumped ship and come and joined us as a, a, a UK <coughs> MEP. And this is increasingly <coughs> happening now. There's also a number of Conservative backbenchers in the House of Commons who, if David Cameron does not give the British people a referendum on whether we stay in or come out of the European dictatorship before the next election, then some of those, after the next election, will come across and join us. Speaking and we'll have our first representation in the Westminster Parliament in, in the Commons. Speaking of crossing the floor, so to speak, mm. um, a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, I had the privilege of interviewing Paul Weston, a former UKIP member, now head of the, uh, or chairman of the uh, British Freedom Party. Mm. Your opinion of the British Freedom Party? I wish that the independent-minded people who are willing to stand away from the major parties could remember that because we are so few, we should stand together. And UKIP is, for all its faults, the biggest of the uh, freedom-loving, democracy-loving, independent-minded parties. And I don't like this splitting off, which is very prone to happen in those smaller parties, precisely because you have to be independent-minded to start with. And this makes everybody much more willing to fight and go their own way. But the British Freedom Party won't really come to anything very much, I don't think. And I would like them all to come back and join us. And we stand together, because gradually... Uh,